So Dwayne, I just bought my pet safe in ground fence system and as you can see I just have about an acre lot here um, and there's some really good instructions but I'm still a little intimidated. Do you think that this is something you could help me with? Yeah, I think with what you've got here and the, and the type of landscaping you have, there's a lot of simple tips and tricks that we can use to help you install this a lot easier than you might think. Uh, you've got a lot of mulched areas that make it very easy to put the wire in. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time to do it that way. Very little grass that we would have to go through and a uh, very small area of concrete that we've got to go through for your driveway. So I think it would be a very easy install to do here. That sounds great. Let's get started. Okay. So before we get started, what kind of tools do you think I'll need to complete the installation? Most of the tools that you'll need, you already have at your home. Uh, you'll need things like a, a rake, a spade shovel, wire cutters, uh, wire strippers, a drill, a uh, weed whacker, uh, possibly a uh, lawn edger if you have one to be able to put some of the wire in the ground, a uh, circular saw with a masonry blade if you need to actually cut a, a, a groove in your concrete to put the wire across the driveway or across the sidewalk or something like that. Okay, great. I think I have most of those, so we should be covered. Okay. So do you have a general idea of where you'd like to keep your dog out of, what areas and so forth that you could tell us about? Yeah, well I have landscaping that kind of outlines the yard and I'd really like to keep her out of the mulch, if I could just keep her kind of in the grass and of course like out of my neighbor's yards and that kind of thing, I think that that would be best. Okay, well one of the things that we can do to do that is we can actually run the wire uh, in the mulch bed itself uh, and keep things a lot simpler than having to try and put it through the yard. When you put it through the mulch bed, you can just pull the mulch back, bury the wire in the mulch, cover it back up, and uh, very simple and easy to do. Great, that sounds awesome. Okay. Okay, we've been through all of the tips of, of the tools that you need to do and things that we're going to do and the layout that, that you want to do for this yard. We're gonna start uh, right now in the mulch bed and show you how to actually put the wire in the mulch bed in a very uh, simple and easy manner. Uh, we'll do that by pulling the mulch back, laying the wire down on top of it, and then pushing the mulch back over the top of that. Okay, awesome. Sounds great. So let's, uh, let me show you how to do this. Okay. Uh, start by just digging into it and pulling it back until you get down to the dirt. And then just continue across where you're going to run your, your line. Okay, so when I go to take my wire off, do I just pull it off this way? We don't recommend doing that because as you can see with the wire, it ends up doing like a coil spring and that makes it a lot more difficult to put in the ground because that coil stays there. What, uh -oh. what I suggest doing is, is leaving the wire uh, wrapped back on there and then taking a, 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 something like a screwdriver or a stick or something and sticking it through the hole and then pulling it off and unraveling it like this because oh, it comes off straight, straight and it's nice and, and doesn't, doesn't coil on you and it's very easy to put in the ground that way. Oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. So now that we've laid this wire down, once we cover it up, will it stay there or is there something else we can do to make it more secure? Well, you can leave it that way and just cover it up with, uh, with mulch. One of the things we recommend is, uh, is lawn staples. Uh, you can buy these at uh, local home center stores and they look uh, very similar to this. Okay. Uh, they're just a U-shaped uh, uh, piece of wire. And what you can do is you can put this over the, over the wire that you've just laid down and it will hold it in place better when you put the mulch back over the top. Otherwise, it has a tendency to just push out with the mulch. So this will secure it uh, much better than just leaving it and doing nothing. Awesome, let's put them in the ground. Okay. Okay, Dwayne, 
lane, so I really want to protect my dog from running in the street, but that means I'm going to have to cross my driveway with the boundary wire. What's the best way to do that so that I'm not running over the wire with my car? What we recommend doing is use an expansion joint to cross the wire uh, out somewhere out near the end of the road. And uh, you have a good one what we, that we can see right here, and this oh, okay. is where I would recommend putting the wire in. Typically we'll have to clean the joint out first before we put the wire in because it gets dirt and stuff in it and uh, we'll show you how to do that a little bit later, uh, but uh, that's where I would recommend putting it. You can see in the expansion joint it's all filled with dirt and various debris and we have to clean that out in order to put the wire in. Mm -hmm. Several ways to do this. Uh, a power washer works really well. Uh, if you use a hose with a sprayer on it and you can spray it out works. The other thing that works is using just a screwdriver or a putty knife to clean it out with and that's what we're going to do today. Okay. Uh, you basically just want to take it and try and get as much of the dirt out as you can. One of the things that you could do also is after you get the, uh, the dirt out with this is to go back with the hose if you don't have a power washer and rinse it out. Uh, that will clean it out even better than what we're, we can get it at this point. But that's the way you, uh, you got to clean out the expansion joint. One of the things that I wanted to mention as we're cleaning this out is when you get to the edge of the drive, a lot of people like, like your yard for instance where they've cut down in to keep the grass away from the driveway itself usually the depth of the cut is not adequate to keep the wire deep enough and you need to go deeper with that so what I would suggest is, is for instance on this one uh, the depth is probably an inch and a half or inch and three quarter and as you can see the ground level is about the depth of the cut so we want to get the wire below the ground level so you don't damage the wire with an edger or a weed whacker or something else that you would use to, to, to clean this with so what we recommend doing is taking your masonry saw and on the very edge cutting as deep as you can go with the saw and then lay the wire down into the ground more so you protect it at the edge. Now that we've got the expansion joint cleaned out, we have to put the wire in the expansion joint. So let's just go ahead and put the wire in there. One of the things that might help you do this is a paint stick to help you get it down and keep it down in there. Yeah, that works really well. It works very well. Now to keep the wire in the expansion joint, what we recommend doing is using what's called a foam backer rod. You can actually buy this at uh, home centers. This particular uh, uh, foam rod is, is 3 8 in diameter. Uh, you can also use half inch diameter. A lot of it will depend on the width of your uh, expansion joint. But what you can do with this is you can put it in the expansion joint and then use the paint stick to help you uh, push it down in and you just push it down into the bottom until it bottoms out on the wire and continue going across your uh, expansion joint until you get it all sealed in. This is much easier to do than trying to use caulking and a caulking gun and it will last longer because you don't have to worry about getting the concrete real clean for it to adhere to. This basically is a friction hole. And you mentioned that there were several tools that I could use to kind of dig my trench. You know, you said I could use a shovel or um, a weed whacker, but it just so happens that I have a yard edger. Is that something that would be good to use? Yes, that would be very good to use. Uh, the other tools will work. Uh, this is one of the faster methods because uh, it's designed to actually cut a, uh, a trench in the ground. Uh, so it, it actually works faster than the other methods. And since you have one, uh, we're going to go ahead and use it, and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, one of the things that you need to make sure and do is always wear safety glasses with this, because with this machine, it does throw up a lot of dirt as you're moving through the yard. So you need to make sure you don't get it in your eyes and things. Right. So. OK. And people who don't have a yard edger, what should they do? They can go out and rent one, or like I said, if you have a if you have a string trimmer or a weed whacker, uh, that will work also. Uh, so there are many options that you have. 
the slowest one and the hardest one is probably using the shovel, and that's why we're suggesting some of these other ones to make things go a little bit faster for you. All right, sounds great. So now that I've dug my trench, it's really narrow. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use to get my wire down in there to make sure it's secured. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, what we typically recommend using is a paint stick. Oh. Uh, something that's that's thin and narrow or any kind of a stick that's thin and narrow that can put the, put the wire down in the trench that you've just cut. Uh, one of the things that we don't recommend is using something sharp like a putty knife or something because you don't want to damage the insulation of the wire. Right. Uh, wire in contact or bare wire in contact with the ground is not a good thing for this system. So you want always to maintain the insulation between the copper wire center and the earth itself. Uh, if you'll notice in the trench that we've just dug, it kind of fills itself back in with the, with the tall grass and stuff. So one of the things that you'll need to do before you put the wire in the ground is to use your hand uh, a little bit to clean out the uh, the pieces of grass and dirt that uh, that have come out of this with the trencher. Okay, Dwayne, I'm gonna throw a trick your way. I've got all this great ivy and ground cover back here that I've worked really hard on, but I definitely don't want my dog digging through it. How in the world am I gonna get the wire underneath that without having to dig up all my gardening? One of the things that we recommend for that is uh, using a broom handle that has either a hole in it or if it doesn't have a hole, you can take tape and tape the wire on it. What you do is you, is you attach the wire to the end of it and actually use the broom handle to shove the wire underneath the ivy or the ground cover and you just keep walking across all your ground cover until you're complete. You, when you get to the end, you unhook it, uh, put the new end on and just keep going until you've on the length that you want to go because obviously you're limited by the length of the, the rod or the, right. the broom handle that you're using. So Dwayne, the manual says that in order to come out from my transmitter to get to the boundary area, I'm supposed to twist the wire. I don't figure that it would be very good to do that by hand. Is there an easier way? Yes, there's a very easy way to do it and it's used in electric drill. Uh, what you do is you take the ends of the wire, uh, put it in the drill, tighten it up so that they're both secure and then you start twisting it, but you have to stretch the wire out first and, and uh, we need to do that before we can start twisting the wire. Okay. When you stretch the wire out, you have to have somebody at the other end either hold it or you have to attach it to something to keep it tight when you twist it. So Dwayne, does this look about right? Yes, it does. What you're really looking for is about 10 to 12 twists per foot. Uh, when you get to that point, stop the drill and you're ready to use the wire. All right, Duane, well, after today, I really feel like I can install my fence and feel good that I'm going to be keeping my pets safe. I really appreciate all your help. Well, I'm glad to be here and glad to help you. Uh -huh, uh, good luck with your installation. Thank you so much.